grace of God for women in our world. It confirms the worth and value of the feminine gender. My wife Becky and daughters Deborah, Daniela and Destiny will lead in the vocals. And so with faith and confidence now, women sing. I am a woman full of virtue, full of honor, Hallelujah. full of glory. Full of glory. to join you tonight as we look into the word of God the platform of the restored woman the Lord has really been using it to do amazing things in the lives of the people and we are not taking it for granted we give God all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus hallelujah since this year began we've been handling some things that have to do with recognizing the enemy understanding the enemy we began with a topic understanding the real, the real, the real enemy of the woman, how to recognize. And from there, we moved on to destroying strongholds. That was just the last thing we did, destroying strongholds. We tried looking at the simplest form, the meaning of stronghold, how they are formed and how they can be destroyed. And we saw that that same enemy that we recognize his activities is the one that establishes strongholds in the lives of the people. And how the Lord has commanded us to destroy all those strongholds. Please, if you missed any of them, I will really encourage you to go back to the previous episodes. They are all there in the YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, Every other platform we have out there. You just click the restored woman. Yeah, God bless you. And today we are continuing in that same frequency as we look further. And we are looking at this topic. Winning your battles. How to know that you are in a battle and the winning of this battle we saw that Eve was unguarded she lived as if there was no enemy anywhere and then we saw how it all ended how the enemy was able to get her our intention our desire our earnest plea is to look at how to recognize this enemy how to pull down the strongholds he has ever built in our lives, and how to keep on winning our battles. It's exciting when you recognize that you have what it takes to win the battles that confront you as an individual, as a person. And as long as you understand that there is a battle, and you understand that God is expecting you to win, glory to Jesus. It's actually disappointing when we don't win our battles. You know, we, 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 we fail God. Just imagine if, if, if Job failed. When God told the devil, go and try him out. We have also been able to establish the devil have rights. <laughs> to try every man on earth. Now the Bible says resist him when he comes. We saw him coming to the Lord Jesus. And if he came to Jesus, do you think that it is in your life that he will not come? He will come. 
but your ability to look at what the enemy is doing and then make sure that in all of his activities, you beat him blue black. You beat him so much that he returned back ashamed, knowing that this one is of those that cannot be devoured. Of course, there are those that can be devoured. Learning these things and understanding them makes you a champion in life and in eternity. And we are conscious not only to win our battles here on earth, we win it the right way, and then we will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So, looking at this topic, winning our battles, I want to read the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 15 to verse 20. Praise the Lord. It says, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of the names together we are about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Verse 17 says, For he was numbered with us, and had obtained part of this ministry. Now, this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. What a description. Mm. 19 says, And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, in so much as that field is called in their proper tongue, a caldema. That is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. Praise the Lord. We are looking at winning our battles, and this is Peter quoting his former colleague, of course, there were colleagues, there were 12 of them. In fact, there were so many of them. And out of the multitude and the disciples, Jesus selected 12. And from these 12, he began to train them. He began to tell them, you 12 that are following me in this life, in the life to come, you're going to have thrones. And you're going to be judging the 12 tribes of Israel. What an office. What a calling. And do you know for every one of us that are in Christ Jesus, all of us have a high calling. The Bible called it a high calling. Whether you are called as a minister of the gospel, you are called as a businessman. Yes, some people are called as businessmen because some people are out there and God has called them to make the money in a godly way, to live godly and be an example in the industry where they belong, that people can be people of God and live in uprightness and make clean money. And then they are also telling those of us that are in the ministry, do the work. And our part is to make sure that anything that has to do with finances are covered there are people who have that calling so whatever you are called to do whether you are an encourager whether you are a financier whether you are a minister it's a high calling and you are supposed to be found faithful we are looking at winning our battles now let me define this battle i'm talking about this battle is the battle that every destiny confronts just like in this year 2022 we continue in the battle of life we continue. There is no ever a time when you were born that you are given a break. <sighs> Let me have a break before I continue this life. No. It continues day and night. So, as the year is rolling up and coming again and rolling up and going again, the battle is there. And I want to let you know, just like you have described about recognizing the real enemy. Now, the enemy is one that is the devil. He's one of the enemies of man here in this life and in this destiny. Here on earth. The second enemy you should recognize, we told clearly, that the world is your enemy. The world is your enemy. Jesus said, because I have saved you out of this world, the world hates you. It hates you because you don't belong to them. For every child of God, you should well remind yourself that the world is your enemy. They hate you because Jesus has saved you out of the world. He told us very clearly. 
He said, the world will hate you. He also said, I have called you out of the world. So it is not just the world as we know it because God so loved the world. It is the system of this world that is against your faith. Now the third one that is your enemy is the flesh. In winning these battles, we are going to look deep into all of this. We are going to understand the, these three major enemies of man. These three enemies that are your enemies, the devil, the flesh, and the world. The Bible told us clearly, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. He that loveth the world, the love of the Father, is not in him. My God. How do you win these battles? You need to recognize that these are oppositions to fulfill your destiny and how to avoid them. Now, as we read the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 15, we saw Peter talking. He said in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the other disciples and he said, what did he say verse 16? Men and brethren, this scripture must be fulfilled. Talked about what David prophesied. Of course, the word of God is a prophecy on its own. You can locate yourself in the word of God. You know, we look at the scripture, it looks as if David was talking about himself and his son, talking about his destiny, but at the end you will see that it is still referring to one man, talking about Judas, and that was what Peter was referring to. And Peter was, was a colleague of this man called Judas Iscariot. We're going to look at this man's life and look at how he failed to win the battle that consumed him. He was not the only one that, that was in that battle. All of us, every day of our life, we confront this kind of battle. They are internal battles. They are personal battles. They are struggles within every one of us. They are the things that are confronting the, th the truth that you know and try to make you to compromise. Now, this man, Judas, that Peter was referring to, is the man, the Bible said he was numbered among them. He even obtained a part of this ministry. Now I'm referring to not only those that are in ministry, but whatever it is that God has handed over to you. We are looking at how to win this battle of life and to end well. So many of our colleagues didn't win this battle. The Bible says now this man purchased a field. He purchased a field. The Bible says with the reward of iniquity. He did not win that battle. That battle overtook him. He's not the only one. The same devil is also going around. Seeking from whom he would devour. But I pray for you. In this battle of life. You will not lose. In the name of Jesus. The devil will not get you. Now the Peter is the man. That's Peter. Apostle Peter was talking. He was not exempted in that battle. We saw how his own way. The Bible said the enemy also came after him. Now look at that same Judas. We don't have time. We're going to look at it as we continue in this episode. Now, the same Judas, the Bible says, the enemy entered into him when he took the sword. And he went out and it was night. That's according to the gospel of John. And after he has already taken away Judas, the Bible said he came for Peter. Peter went through that same battle that Judas went through. It is not because Peter was better than Judas. That was why he was standing and talking about the man that fell. My prayer for you that you will be among those that will stand and tell the testimony. Not among those who are telling their stories. Oh, this man used to be here. This man used to be here. But when he went out, he purchased a field of blood because of the reward of iniquity he got. These are the battles. Now, these battles are not obvious. These battles, as I was talking about it when I was referring to recognizing the real enemy, the Bible talked about Jesus. He was, they were eating, they were having a discourse. He was downloading to the disciples instructions about the kingdom, about the ministry. And suddenly, Jesus paused and began to talk to Peter personally. He said, hey, Peter. The devil have desired to have it that he may sift you out with. That is the nature of this battle. That is the nature 
of this battle. It is not obvious. It is not, it is not what you can lay your hold on. Yet, it is going on. So how to win this battle is what we are talking about. How to come to the point where we don't allow this battle to overwhelm us. Now, a battle was going on in the life of Judas that nobody was seeing. All the preaching Jesus preached. All the things that he did, Judas witnessed it. He witnessed the going out for evangelism, how the demons were subject to him. He witnessed the opening of the eyes of the blind. He witnessed all the things that Jesus, for those three and a half years, he saw all of them. Yet, he could not win this battle. Our prayer is that as we continue in this precious life that God has given us, because so many people have died, and their opportunity to live out their life on earth is gone. Now, it doesn't matter how old, how long, or the duration. What matters is the quality of the life and how you are able to prove God faithful. Of course, when you live according to your, your, your days, when you live according to your purpose, you will fulfill your days. God said the number of your days you shall fulfill on earth. But some people are cut short before their time, just like we have been mentioning about the rich fool. Whom the Lord came and said, that night your soul is required of you because you do not even know why your, your, your ground is yielding. Understanding that this precious life God has given us is given to us for a purpose. And that we shouldn't be living it and be taking it for granted. Rather, for us to realize that there is a battle going on and we are supposed to win this battle. We have looked at only one section, recognizing this enemy, that is the devil. Now, the, you have other enemies apart from the devil. All of them are working together to bring you down. And when you are careless, playing around with the enemy that wants to bring you down, that is where you will be termed a fool. Every foolish way foolish talking, foolish behavior, foolish activities you have been involved in. I'm trusting God that in this season it will be cut out of your life in the name of Jesus. Looking at this, the Bible says, he purchased the field of iniquity. He fell headlong and burst in the midst. His bowels gushed out. This is the description of how Judas ended it because he lost this kind of battle we are talking about. He ended miserably. And right now, Judas is still in hell. He's still crying, counting the 30 pieces of silver and wishing that all those imaginary things is like, oh, I couldn't have betrayed my master. He will recount all the miracles. He will recount all the... Because in hell, your senses are well, well alive. Because we heard about the man, the rich man, and Lazarus, Jesus told us their story. He was in hell. He remembered all that happened in hell. He was even crying and praying. His prayers were never answered. Judah is in hell. Counting all the times he could have turned his ways, but he could not overcome this enemy we are talking about. The Bible says he fell headlong. Now can we continue? I want to look at a scripture, very sensitive scripture, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. Praise the name of Jesus. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I want to read verse 10. Oh my God. The Bible says, 2 Timothy 4 verse 10. For Demas has forsaken me. That was Paul talking. Demas is one of the preachers, one of the disciples, one of the ministers of the gospel. He said he has forsaken him, Paul. Of course, we all know Paul and his zeal for the Lord. Demas has been following, moving around, but they came to the point. He said that Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Hey! And he's departed into Thessalonica, where things are happening. This gospel I'm following you around, Paul, I'm preaching, excuse me. I love this world. The Bible says he left Paul, he departed into Thessalonica, and then someone else followed him. That is why you should be conscious what to do. Don't be a bad example. All of us are examples by the way we live our life, whether good or bad. When he went to Thessalonica, the Bible says, another man called 
Christians, he went to Galatia. And then Titus followed their example and went to Del Dalmatia. Can you imagine? Paul was so discouraged. And he was writing this. He said, only Paul, only Luke remained. He was even scared now. Luke may also depart. He said, only Luke is with me. This other brethren are supposed to be part of the ministry. Look at Peter standing and talking to other disciples and saying, this man was once numbered among us. He departed because he loved this present world. How to win and keep on winning until we see the face of him who has saved us from this world. That's what we are talking about. How to recognize this battle, the nature of this battle. How to recognize and how, look at what he said. He said, this man loved this present world. How can you love your enemy? The world is your enemy. He said he loved this present world and because of it, he followed this world and departed into Thessalonica where things are happening. Praise the name of Jesus. We are trusting the Lord to bring us to the point. We are every craving, every craving for the things that our flesh wants. Talk about the flesh, talk about the world, and talk about the devil. Anything that gives him access into our life, we're going to trust the Lord to deliver us. That is what the Bible says we have been saved. That is when our spirit is born again. We are being saved. That is when our soul is being transformed. As we are learning the word of God, we are getting better. We are improving our lives. And we are becoming more like Jesus. And then we shall be saved. That is the one of the rapture. Or when you die before the rapture, you leave this body. These are the things that fight. The world, Satan, and your flesh. Your flesh is your enemy that is living within you. And if you don't subdue it, if you don't bring it down, using the word of God, you allow your flesh to move you into the things. And that was what we saw what was happening. Because the devil was advertising to Judas the things that are his lost. The things that are the things that can pull him. And he followed after it. And I want to stop at this point. To look at how. The enemy uses. What we have not disciplined enough. To pull us away. And we lose the battle. Judas own was money. Now we're going to look at giving ourselves exam um, an assignment. I like that. We're going to give ourselves an assignment. So that next time we come we continue with that. Judas, we can see very clearly, I don't know if he was aware or not, we can see very clearly that his own challenge is with money, finances. I don't know how he won good his way into being the one that is there. Treasurer, is that? He's the one holding the bag of money in the ministry of Jesus. I don't know how he won good his way to take that position. That was his own. I don't know if he ever knew that that was his weakness. Just like some of us may not know our weakness. So we are going to give ourselves an assignment. When next we come, we are going to go deeper and find out how those assignments has been done. This is how I discovered my own weakness. These are the traces of the things that are my weakness. Because if you don't discover them, the devil will have an upper hand in your life regarding this battle. Okay, look at Samson. That was a man that was so anointed that became so carnal that his carnality ended him in calamity. As in, Samson anointed, called, even before his birth, an angel came to announce him was so careless about this battle he lost the battle he lost the battle he began well but he became careless he allowed this enemy his own the flesh and the enemy said i don't need to show up all i need to do is to walk behind this flesh that he has not disciplined and deal with him and that was how he got him 
Judas, I'm not sure that the guy found out that this was actually his challenge. Now, what is your own challenge, even as a tongue-talking, Holy Ghost-filled child of God? In case you'd have forgotten, Judas was among the disciples that went out and they said that demons were subject to him. He cast out devils, he healed the sick, he raised the dead, he did all those things. And when they came back, they were rejoicing that the demons were subject to him. He was included in that testimony, yet he could not handle this devil we are talking about. The devil walked behind using the flesh and what he lusted after to make him defeated in this battle. The Bible said he fell headlong. They were describing how he died. Headlong he hit the ground and his stomach busted. His bow was gushed out and that place he died, he used that 30 pieces of silver to buy that land and that is where they used to bury the strangers that die in Jerusalem. What an inheritance! Meanwhile, he was among those who were called to be the pillars of the church. He was supposed to sit with the twelve, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. He said, all of you that have followed me in this life, Jesus was telling them, how can he end like that? One thing is for you to be called, I've described the callings, all manner of calling, music minister, called into the ministry as a musician, called into the ministry as a preacher, called as a financier, called as a businessman. All of us have high callings, discovering your calling and to make sure that the devil doesn't get you and deal with you and finish with you. This is winning your battles and this is the introduction. We are trusting the Lord to go deeper into it and as we look at these things, we're going to look at our life so that even though the enemy is there, the Bible says that Jesus was talking about himself. He said the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. Come and do your worst devil. Nothing in me is responding to you. That is a stable stability in his dealings that the devil knows he can touch him he fulfilled his ministry and he left, left, us, left us an example to follow the prince of this world comes and has nothing in me and that is how we are supposed to say when the enemy comes like he was coming to Judas gave him the idea to betray the master for a fee it came as an inspiration, <laughs> demonic inspiration. Can you imagine that? It came like an inspiration. <laughs> hey, do you know you can make some more money? All this, your small, small money you are taking from the post, you know you need to keep complete that building you started. You know, you need to send more money back home. It came as an inspiration. After all, Jesus can, you know, they have held him once and he just... Disappeared. The Bible says that he went in the midst of them and then he, he, they didn't see him again. <laughs> Imagine somebody in your midst, you, uh, you arrested him and suddenly they didn't see the person again. Several times it happened. They want to carry him and throw him over. They just didn't see him again. And then, oh my God. So Judas was thinking, maybe I have this inspiration. I know he's son of God. He cannot die. You. Hey, all these miracles, Jesus cannot die. But I can make more money out of these guys. They want to get Jesus. See what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to them, liars with them. You know, I'm a smart guy. By the time I go there, the devil was just advertising to him the trap that ended him. He's still crying in hell today. Betraying the Son of God. Betraying the Son of God. And Peter was talking about him. He became a history. Others are still there alive in their families. He's already gone. You will not go like that. The devil is after people who are not understanding this battle that's why we are looking at this battle know how to recognize this battle how to win this battle now the assignment my time is almost up is for you to go find out those things you have tendency for because these are the places the devil you will come after you with those loose ends i just thought about judas his own is women don't try judas with women don't try him he will go from one city to another city he will see women his own challenge was women. What about greed? Look at Demas. His own that he loved the world. The things about the world. And that was how he departed. My prayer for every one of us hearing us tonight is that you will not be shifted or moved in the place God has secured you. That you will win this battle 
and finish your race like paul that said i have fought a good fight you know what he was fighting he was fighting resistances he was fighting oppositions he was fighting these things that are telling him that what god told him he's not gonna fulfill there are battles we fight every day winning this battle is what we are talking about i want to pray and i'm trusting the lord that this foundation we have established will grow with it so go and find out what are those ten dances look at judas the devil got him all those even peter peter had the tendency to deny but peter found mercy he denied actually the devil thought he has gotten him but thank god for his heart that was willing and ready he cried he prayed do you know i personally believe that if judas even though he betrayed the lord jesus if he had cried like peter cried like peter Oh, we could have had Judas. God could have forgiven him. He could have forgiven him. Peter went out and cried. What was it about Peter that made him to recover from that attack of the devil? That made Judas not to recover. Rather, he, he fell headlong. And gushed out all his intestines. Fell out all his bowels. Pulled out. He could not overcome. You became a victim in this battle. I pray that you will not be a victim. I pray you will recognize this battle. And I pray you will position yourself. So that you will join. As Peter was standing among the disciples. Describing. That was a man that grace helped. He had his bruises. He had his wounds. He even had his scars to show. Yes, he had some cast, scar. The scar of the wound to show where he had been yet he stood among the disciples jesus told him when you are converted strengthen your bread in case you have disappointed the lord in case you have fallen in case you have compromised can i pray with you as i close tonight the same peter that stood after denying the lord i don't know the area you may have denied the lord can we pray together you can begin to talk to god and say father i denied you in, in sincerity i was not sincere enough i lied here i lied there i was not stable i was not this you know the areas you may have denied the lord you can begin to talk to god now and say lord please help me lord please help me Help me the way you help Peter. I don't want to end up like Judas. Oh Lord, I cry out today in the name of Jesus. The way Peter stood among the, the redeemed as if he never did anything. That is how God forgives us as far as the east is from the west. Whatever you have done, as you come to the place of repentance, the Lord will forgive you. He will give you the grace and you will yet fulfill the purpose why he called you in the name of Jesus. Just say after me, say Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. I've had your word. And I thank you. I'm learning how to perpetually win my battle. And how to continue to fulfill destiny. Lord, I receive grace today as I look into my life and observe the places that the enemy gains access into my life. And as I yield to you, Holy Spirit, you teach me how to keep winning my battle. God bless you. I pray the Lord to keep you, to preserve you. And I want to pray for somebody who is not at peace with the Lord, who is just, you know, church goer, who is just, you know, God knows that I love him, but you are not really at peace with God. Can you say after me, say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you. Give me the grace to live for you and give me the power to live for you. From today, every covenant speaking against me, is broken in Jesus' name. I pray the Lord to keep you, to preserve you, to sustain you, and to teach you how to walk every day in victory in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I pray for everyone that have heard us, and I ask for your grace, Abba, Father, that whatever area that they have felt before, in any area, in any field, in whatever, oh Lord, they have disappointed you, may they receive grace from henceforth to begin to walk properly. In this year, 2022, Father, give us what it takes, Abba, Father, to be more than conquerors in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Till I come your way again, I am Pastor Joy. God bless you. Hallelujah. I am I cannot be defeated.